Plotinus, the one. Now, there are many ways of reading Plotinus because he's so rich. So I have selected a particular way of going for tonight. And what I'd like to do is focus on these three quotes. This is the way Plotinus talks about the subject he is going to explore. He talks about it in terms of the effect this kind of study has on the person who participates in it. Notice the language. The participant in this game fears it will encounter nothingness. The mind reels at this. And then this proviso that the initiate is forbidden to speak of this subject. These are the three things. Now, why he has these expressions, which are principal expressions of the way he looks at this subject, I hope to make clear by leading you into what may in fact be in some small measure, an encounter with nothingness. Perhaps your mind will reel at what this is all about, and perhaps you will see then why this very subject is the highest subject and uh, the initiate is forbidden to speak of it. Therefore, I'm going to take you through Plotinus on the one as a yoga or a spiritual discipline. I'm going to focus on several sections. Each of these is in Plotinus, section one, four. Now, let me see whether we can make it clear. This is the goal. That's where we're going. He first gives a discussion in the first section on the nature of the one. Then he's going to build in a series of steps to why the idea of the one must be beyond knowledge. It must be beyond knowledge. It must be beyond intelligence. However, while it must be beyond it, it must be seen. It must be encountered. It must be seen. Because that's the second step in our yoga. There are two parts that we're going to uncover, two major sections. One, after having seen the intelligence, then the process is going to the one. The other, of course, is getting to whatever this is called the intelligence. He's going to urge us to go through a yoga, a spiritual discipline, through being. As we've discovered before, talked about many times, the idea of intelligence is a three concept, right? capital B, being, right? vitality. These three are always hyphenated, though for different reasons, he may focus on one of the three when he has a need for that. Right? Now, there's a need to conceive both of intelligence and the one. That's part of the yoga. Once you get to see this, what? Being able to conceive it in his language, then this expression comes up. We're going to reel at this. The mind is going to reel at this because it's a much more interesting advanced contemplation. Now, I'd like to therefore just talk about the idea before we go further. Idea of the one. 
There's one very interesting idea of the one. Um, everything, regardless of what it is. Um, actually, it's a very lovely quote. Let me read it for you. Everything that whatever is, anything at all, truck, box, you and I, a cat, whatever. Right? Everything, if it is at all, there must be a one about it because there must be a union of all of its parts. Therefore, it exhibits a unitary organization. And that unity or oneness is actually proportional it's, he puts it in a very nice way. Each thing that is called the one has a unity proportionate to its nature, sharing in unity, the more or less, according to the degree of its being. So therefore, this can be anything at all, whatever it might be. The degree to which you can talk about it being a one is that it has a unity. That unity is proportionate to its being. Therefore, you can talk about an orchestra, each person an individual, highly trained, can come together to work together towards a higher goal, the harmony and the artful presentation of a piece. They're achieving a higher unity than any mob can do, and therefore they have proportionally, they can be said to share in a greater degree of being. What is being? Ah, they're participating in a greater degree of intelligence. That makes sense, doesn't it? Yes. <laughs> So in the same way, they would be exhibiting a certain kind of state of mind. They'd have to maintain a certain state of mind to reach that level of artful presentation. That state of mind is a state of being through which they participate in the intelligence of a Beethoven sonata, whatever it, is, whatever it is that's being played. And as a consequence, they experience a certain kind of vitality. Therefore, whatever one is, when any one you're talking about, the particular unitariness of it or oneness of it is proportionate to the level of its being. So therefore we can go for all physical appearances, whatever it might be, and we can apply that one principle to it. Now, um, the big thing therefore is that being, right now here, being is not the one. Being is not the one. Because you can talk about this, you can talk about this in these terms. And therefore, to talk about this, whatever this is, presupposes that you need these three concepts brought together into a unity. Therefore, whatever this is, it has these aspects. It has these aspects, then obviously then you're making distinctions. If you're making distinctions in something, then you have a unity of these distinctions brought together in a oneness, and that is not the one without all distinctions and without any multiplicity, whatever. Now, where we're going is, we're going to talk about what is it like to encounter this? This is where we're going. Right. So, as our spiritual voyage goes on, we want to know, what is it like to be here? 